Good morning. We are group two members. We are going to discuss about the land question in Zimbabwe, where I'm going to do the introduction. Mm -hmm. Land reforms in Zimbabwe began officially in the year nine, 1980 with the signing of the Lancaster House Agreement as effort more equitably distributed land between the black substance farmers and white Zimbabwean of the European ancestry who had traditionally enjoyed superior political and economic status. The program's stated target intended to alter the ethnic balance of land ownerships. The government land distribution in perhaps the most crucial and more bitterly contested political issues surrounding Zimbabwe. It has been criticized, criticized for the violence and the intimidations which marred several exploration as well as parallel collapse of domestic banks which held billions of dollars worth of bonds on liquidated properties. So from the introduction, we've learned that uh, the land question in Zimbabwe began in the year nine, 1980. After looking through the introduction, we are going to look at the to look at the legacy of Zimbabwe's revolutionary struggle. Zimbabwe's revolutionary struggle was a complex mixture of black nationalism, communist ideology, and racial liberation to overturn their social, economic, and political order. Liberation struggle in Zimbabwe grew out of combination of international internal and international pressure on the white minority governance of the of Rhodesia, southern Rhodesia to enfranchise its black population. Zabu and Zanu has formed uh, to advocate for end of white rule banned in southern Rhodesia government. The idea formed the pillar of revolution ideology, black majority and redistribution of land to the black Africans. In 1962, Ian Smith, Rhodesian Front Party rose to power on the vast words of the land owning while farming community by promising to resist any effort to ease racial stratification of land ownership. Liberation focuses on ending minority rule and enfranchising blacks. Consolidation of power in 1987 did significant step towards its liberation era on land agendas, land seizure, be, became steep in racial antagonism, decolonization, rhetoric, and political corruption that made a mass of sensible economic reform. And then we go in 1990, there was a decline in Zimbabwe economy that led, led to government into brutal autocracy that suppressed human rights and democracy while stoking the flames of racial division within the country. I'm going to begin with how land policies were implemented in Zimbabwe. The first one, the curatory framework for non-state actors. It plays a role in land reform process, ensuring that whole experience and perceptions are tabled in this process. The second one, for poor land policy development. It helps correct the disadvantages that poor people typically suffer in many areas of land policy. The next one is land sector coordination. It's a means by which non-state actors coordinate their interventions and support to enhance impact 
in the land sector, particularly during during land reform process. Next, we are going to discuss about the advantages of land reforms in Zimbabwe. Uh, the first advantage is that redistribution of the land to some farmers can help to reduce the amount of poverty in the country. Then the next one, giving land to those who are less fortunate, they help they are likely to help themselves grow more food, which, which will be used to increase the amount of income being received. Then the last advantage is that uh, dividing land allows for more food to be produced per hectare and increases income for the general country and strengthen the economy of the country. After we are done looking at the advantages, we are going to look at the disadvantages. The first disadvantage is that it brought frustration to those who, who lost their lands and their lands were taken away by the government. And the next disadvantage is that uh, land reforms is a system which was very difficult to end up getting more land than everyone had. So it was an unfair system of getting land. After going through the election, the legacy that uh, land reform left in Zimbabwe, the advantages and the disadvantages, finally we are going to look about the conclusion. In the conclusion, you can see that uh, land reforms left a serious negative impact in the Zimbabwean economy, whereby we had a, dro a drop in total farm output which has led to instances of starvation and famine. Next, the increasing poverty level combined with the increased informality of farming operation among the farmers who receive distrib distributed land has led to an increased child labor, especially in the growing of sugar cane.